Welcome to the Bath, Fizz, and Foam Easy Listening Hour. My name is Robin French Smith, and I'm about to prep a hundred bath bombs. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, yeah, sorry about that vibe. I'm just feeling it. Like, I picked the music uh, for this. What is this? This video? Yeah, it's a video. I picked the music for this video before I even decided what I was going to talk about. I just felt like it was like, I don't know, just like smooth jazz, kind of like chill. So here's the deal. I think that I might go back and uh, do another video like this without any soundtrack um, and just make it the uh, the sound of me like sifting the ingredients because I have never understood the ASMR culture, right? The ASMR vibe more than I understood it tonight when I sped this little baby up to like tiz 10 zazillion, 10 zazillion, yeah, it's a, that's a number, it's legit a number, uh, 10 zazillion times faster than what it should be and um and heard the like sound of me <laughs> of me sifting all my ingredients and then like the really satisfying like sound of me like dropping the ingredients into the bag it's it's pretty legit I'm not gonna lie and um I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna go back and do that and make another video like that I can't unfortunately it wouldn't be as fun to listen to this particular one because I'm listening to true crime in the background of this and so in addition to the like satisfying ch -ch -ch -ch, you also have the like you know of sped up talking so that's not quite as fun right but the actual vibe of like the ch -ch 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 -ch. I feel it. I feel it. I think uh, I think I'm understanding that aesthetic now more than ever before. So we are um, we are two and a half minutes into this video and I might as well introduce myself and tell you what we're doing. My name is Robin French Smith. You are on the Bath Fizz and Foam YouTube channel for some easy listening, like I said, all you cool cats and kittens. Uh, today I am showing you how I prep bath bombs. Now, uh, this the I'm, I'm prepping seven bags, and each bag makes between 14 and 16 full-size bath bombs. So this is the equivalent of approximately 100 bath bombs. That's basically what I'm prepping, and this is about a third of what I prep on a weekly basis to um, to make. I didn't, I'm kind of low on baking soda. I need to go pick some baking soda up. And um, I also did not think that you guys wanted like a super, super long video. Um, so, you know, this is good enough. This shows you how, how I do it. And um, so, you know, people ask a lot, how do you, how, how should we scale, you know, if I'm scaling, how can I scale and do a bunch of bath bombs at one time. So this is my solution. I have tried, um, I've tried several different ways. So if you make soap, you understand the concept of master batching, right? You, um, you add all your oils together, you kind of prep your lye beforehand, and then when you're ready to go, you have it all ready and you can just pour it. So one of the things um, that I've, I, so I've tried with bath bombs to basically take all the ingredients for a bath bomb, put it in a giant, a giant, um, you know, a, a giant tub of some kind, a, a giant bucket. Mix that all up and then have that ready to go. And what I noticed, and I'm, ta I'm talking like a big, a big, like a Rubbermaid trash can tub size thing, like big. Um, what I noticed was that it worked fine at the beginning, kind of got a little skeevy in the middle, and then towards the end, you really had a lot more discrepancies with your batch. And I really, I, I think that that's because, um, you know, the grain size of some of the, the, the granule size of some of these ingredients is vastly different. Um, you have cow and clay and cornstarch, which are really light and fluffy. 
and you have citric acid, um, which I'm not actually mixing my citric acid and I don't even know why I say that, but you have baking soda. Um, you know, you just, you just have like different ingredients and they have different, they have different weights and they sift and they kind of settle over time. And so what I noticed is that towards the end of the batches that I made when I would just kind of put it all in one bucket, I would have a lot more issues. Um, so I just, I don't do them that way anymore. The way that I do them is what you see right here. So I have Ziploc bags that are already marked as saying bath bomb. I just continue to reuse the bags. So there's really not a lot of waste with that. Um, but each batch can make uh, 14 to 16 bath bombs, like I said. And a lot of times I actually split these batches. So I, you know, I can get several batches. Like this could represent seven batches or it could represent 14 batches for me, uh, 14 half batches. You know, it just kind of depends on what mood I'm feeling, how, what I need to accomplish for that day. So what I like about doing this is that when I'm ready to make a bath bomb, I have everything ready to go. I have it all out on the, um, everything's measured. I don't have to worry about the mess that I'm gonna make or pulling every ingredient out. It also lets me, it also lets me um, know if I'm running low on ingredients. So I'm not in the middle of a batch with my expensive ingredients already mixed in and then figuring out that I'm short on, uh, you know, I don't know, callan clay or something like that, something that I'm going to need. So uh, that really helps control like with inventory control and lets me know okay, this is, you know, this is how many batches that um, I can make right now with what I have on hand. So that's, you know, <laughs> that's really important to know, especially if you are, if you own a business or anything like that, where you need to have this stuff kind of on lock. Um, the other thing that you'll see that I'm doing is I am weighing, um, weighing every ingredient. Well, yeah, I'm weighing every ingredient. I'm a huge advocate of weighing your ingredients. So I'm weighing every ingredient as I'm adding it, but I'm also sifting every ingredient. Even um, the ingredients that are sort of fine and, you know, typically what might not be sifted by other people, I sift everything. And the reason that I do that is, I mean, you can see there's little tiny clumps in the pretty much every ingredient has some kind of little tiny clump in it somewhere along the line. Um, I think the only one that I didn't uh, sift was that one clay that you can see in there, the kind of tan color, um, and that's because it was already sifted. So when I'm actually doing uh, several more batches at one time, I'm actually sifting those ingredients into a big tub, <laughs> not doing it here on the table like you see I mean I'm doing them here on the table in that little tiny container because I'm trying to keep it within the camera frame um, but when I'm making a big batch I'm just sifting um, like I'll sift all my baking soda into a five gallon bucket it's already sifted and then I just transfer that into the baggies and um, I, I just don't I, what I don't do is buy my uh, 15 pound or 30 pound or 25 pound bags of baking soda, sift them and then leave them sitting for a week. I found that they still, you know, they'll, they'll get compressed over time even if I do that. So I just sift it right before I'm going to use it. It's no big deal. I sift it into a big five gallon bucket and then everything is ready to go. I did mention uh, that I do not sit, I'm not adding my citric acid. I know that there are other makers who pre-batch this way and they do add their citric acid and they do it without having any problems. So I know that that is possible. It's, it's um, be because I live in the South and um, I live on the Gulf of Mexico. It's very, very humid where I live. Um, I, I'm constantly battling humidity. And so if I do that, if I add citric acid to mine, they will begin to react even in the bag. So I just, I don't do my citric acid and then I don't do my wet ingredients. I don't mind measuring out my wet ingredients per batch as needed per batch. Um, I've tried to pre-batch them before and I just tend to run into issues with that. So um, that's just something that I don't do anymore. Uh, but having all these powders ready to go is, I mean, to me, it's a huge deal. So yeah, I will go through and make um, probably I prep enough for like three or four hundred bath bombs at one time 
and then um, I have all those ready to go and very little fuss later on down the road. If I wanna make a quick batch of bath bombs, I can do that very easily. And um, yeah, I will also add, I don't think that it's in the video here. I think that I cut the video off before I did this, but I use um, day dots, which a day dot is something that in the food service industry you use to mark your food to um, like prepped food to know what day it was prepped, what it is, etc. So I'll use it and, and they, they dissolve with water, right? They can just kind of wipe off and dissolve with water. I use day dots um, to mark the bath bomb so I know what day I made it. And then I'll go and add those into my batch log. So everything is accounted for and I know what was batched and what was made on what day. Um, it's pretty simple, honestly. It will save you a ton of time if you choose to do this. So I definitely suggest thinking about it. If you, you have to have a recipe that you know works for you and is reliable and that you really like, but as long as you have kind of your recipe on lock and you know what you're doing, um, this is a great solution for getting a lot of bath bombs prepped and ready in basically no time. So Thanks for watching today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed your smooth, cool jazz. Your funky listening time with me. Um, visit us at bathbizandfoam.com. We have classes, we have color studies, we have boot camps, we have all kinds of cool stuff. Come visit us at Bath, Biz, and Foam Facebook group. We have uh, support. We have people who are helpful and nice and friendly and you can hang out with us we do lives every monday we got some cool stuff going on so come see us and um happy making